His 23-point average pales in comparison to his performance Saturday night against Duke. He had a career-high 41 on 14 of 20 from the floor, 13 of 13 from the free throw line, and eight rebounds. It was just three shy of the all-time Maryland single-game scoring record, and the first time an ACC player had that many points since Ralph Sampson in 1981. Something has to give tonight as the only two winless team in the conference come face-to-face. -face. Wake Forest and Maryland coming up next. And Bonner, and it's a pleasure to have you with us tonight for Atlantic Coast Conference basketball, Maryland against Wake Forest. And Dan, Wake Forest, even with all the problems that they've had this year, and there have been plenty of them, they seem to have found a style that allows them to be a legitimate threat to anybody that they play. They sure have, Mike. Bob Stack really faced a challenge with all the injuries, the defections, the illnesses. He had to come up with a style that not only was his team comfortable with, but that they could be competitive with. And I think the style that he's adopted, a slow style, walk the ball up the court, milk the 45-second clock, has been effective for them. An indication, the first time they played Clemson, they lost by 27 points and were never in the game. The last time they played Clemson, although they lost the game, they were in the game to the end and had a chance to win. I talked with Bob Stack before the game, and he said that's his goal. He wants his Deacons in the game with a chance to win at the end. Well, that very slow tempo, what coaches usually do in that situation on the other side is try to press and increase the tempo. But when you press Wake Forest, you've got a real problem. You sure do, Mike. The popular wisdom is that you can't press Wake because of Tyrone Bogues. When Bogues is in the game, he's so quick, he handles the ball so well, it makes it very difficult double teaming because he can beat it and get easy shots down at the other end. Maryland, after playing that three-day stretch where they went against North Carolina, Georgia Tech, and Duke, has gone from a team that played very well and was frustrated because they couldn't win to a team that's not playing well at all and is even more frustrated. Basketball is such an emotional game, Mike. Any team goes through peaks and valleys, and I think that Maryland had themselves so ready for those three games that they simply haven't been able to sustain that kind of emotion since then. They're going to have to get it back because tonight's a very important game for the, the slow style, trying to use up each a uh, lot of the 45-second clock on each possession. Each possession becomes very important, and I think Wake Forest is going to have to be efficient in their possession. If they're only going to keep the game to, say, where they get 50 possessions, they're going to have to score about one point of possession, and that's pretty efficient. Other thing, Wake Forest has shown some weakness inside. To stay in a game like this, it's important that they rebound well, particularly their defensive board. How about for Maryland, the only other ACC team that still has, hasn't gotten that first win? Mike, Maryland is a much better basketball team than they've played, and it's time for them to get together and say, this is ridiculous, this has gone on far enough. They've got to get some intensity, and they've got to play hard tonight because that's the only way they're going to drive Wake out of this style. I think Maryland has to go inside. I think Lewis and Bias, of course, have to have big games for Maryland, and, per turn and turnovers are going to be important because possessions are big for Wake Forest. They're also going to be big for Maryland that Maryland can't afford to be given the ball away. All right, that's the way we see it in the pregame. We'll check back on the game plan at halftime, and the game plan has been brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Wake Forest and Maryland coming up live from Cole Forest against Maryland live from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. And our thoughts and prayers are with the families and friends of the seven American heroes who gave their lives in the tragic explosion above Cape Canaveral this morning. For a special tribute to them here at Cole Fieldhouse, let's join public address announcer Nick Kowaldikides. Ladies and gentlemen, the university's Department of Intercollegiate Athletics, along with our nation, mourns the tragedy of the 25th launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger and its occupants. Pilot Mike J. Smith, Craig Jarvis, Dr. Ron McNair, L. Onizuka, Commander Francis R. Scobie, former resident and school teacher of Prince George's County, Krista McAuliffe, and mission specialist and 1977 PhD graduate in electrical engineering from the University of Maryland, Dr. Judith Resnick. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment of silence. Thank you. Introducing our starting lineups. From the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, head guard of 5'3", junior number 14, Tyrone Bowes. 
for the Terrapins of Maryland at guard. A 6'5 junior, number three, Keith Getlin. For Wake Forest at guard, a 6'2 freshman, number 20, Rod Watson. For Maryland at guard, a 6'1 senior, number 12, Jeff Baxter. For the Demon Deacons at center, a 6'9 freshman number 45, Paul Dybert. For Maryland at center, a 6'8 junior number 32, Terry Long. For the Demon Deacons at forward, a 6'4 freshman number 21, Arthur Larkins. For the Terrapins at forward, a 6'7 sophomore number 33, Derek Lewis. For Wake Forest at forward, a 6'7 junior number 42, Mark Klein. And for Maryland at forward, a 6'8 senior number 34, Lynn Baez. Wake Forest head coach, Bob Stack. Maryland's head coach, Charles G. Lefty Trissell. Here's the officiating crew that's going to be with us here tonight in College Park. In the middle, Joe Forte, flanked by Dick Morrow and Russell Herrick. Gatlin is back in the lineup for Maryland. He'd been sidelined with back spasms for Duke. And you've got Arthur Larkins, who'd been out with a broken bone in his foot, back for his second game. Maryland controls the tip. And I think Gatlin will help Maryland very much, and I think Larkins will help Wake Forest possibly even more because he's a scoring threat, and they don't have many of those. Arthur Larkins is matched up against Leonard Bias man-to-man. Baxter didn't care that time. He drilled it, but Wake was in a diamond or a box and one against Lenny Bias. Baxter, who doesn't get uh, too many shots closer than 17 feet from the basket, hits his first. There's a miss outside by Rod Watson. Maryland with a rebound. Gee, so much for milk in the 45 seconds. Line. That's right. Only milked about four seconds <laughs> off of it that time. There's Baxter faking the long shot. Gatlin, good pass. Derek Lewis tries for the jam, but he'll get the foul at the baseline. That was the hardest jam up against the rim, I think, that I've ever seen, Mike. Good drive by Lewis, good penetration to the basket. Klein moved underneath slightly, and that caused Lewis to miss. But the first couple of possessions that Maryland has had, Mike, they've been very aggressive with the basketball. They haven't been going to Lenny Bias, and I think that's a good sign. Uh, you got to look at uh, Mark Klein. The foul was actually on Arthur Larkins, who reached in on the way by. That's one on Larkins, and he has fouled out of three ball games this year. Forced to play forward 6'4", even with great leaping ability, can get you in some foul trouble. Lewis, free throw line, has that line drive motion, got it down, and it's 4 nothing Terps. Now here, Maryland's going to show you that they don't think it's impossible to press Wake Forest. Talk to the Maryland coaching staff before the game. They're going to double team when a player other than Bogues has the ball. You won't see him trying to double team Bogues. Bogues all the way down the lane, layup is good, and we've got the foul. It's going to be on Gatlin. Bogues will get the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. He makes almost everybody who's in front of him look silly. Boy, he sure does, Mike. He just blew by Keith Gatlin. Gatlin was trying to stay away, but Bogues was so quick he got by him, made him look bad. That's one on Gatlin, and Muggsy Bogues will go to the free throw line. He is the number one assist man in the country, almost eight and a half a ball game. He has a three-point lead, and Maryland's lead is down to one. Here's the press, and there's where Bogues' lack of height can get him in trouble. You just lob the ball over him rather than put the ball on the ground. That's true, Mike, but then somebody might try to dribble it up the court, and that's his, his arena. Terry Long starting at center for Maryland. He has been in and out of Lefty Grizzell's doghouse. And now Wake Forest is in a straight 2-3 zone this time down the court. And Bias hasn't touched it yet. There's Long on the pass from Lewis, a little too far for him. Good idea by Lewis. He needs to make a better pass. And Bias has it, not looking to shoot. Good cross-court pass to Baxter. Shot clock is at eight seconds. Gatlin gets it to Baxter. He goes to the baseline. Three seconds and has to force it. Won't go. Long kept it alive. 
Bogues almost had the rebound and Gatlin gets it. Good defense by Wake Forest, Mike, but you saw one of their weaknesses there. The defensive rebounding just wasn't there. Maryland banged the boards pretty well. Gatlin from 19. 6-3 Maryland to the first two points for Gatlin. Once again, those outside shots, everything looks great when they go in, but they're not always going to go in. That's for sure, Mike. Maryland would be well advised to try to penetrate against that zone and create some play inside. Watson and Larkins working outside. Now Klein comes all the way out near the center circle to take the ball. There's Derek Lewis, Mike. We've seen him a couple of times this year guarding his man in a man-to-man -man situation, and Maryland was in man-to-man -man that time. But sometimes when Lewis comes out at half court to guard his man, he keeps his hands on his man's, on his man's uh, hips, and he got called that time. That's number one on the sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland. This is Bogues who played his high school ball at uh, Dunbar, Baltimore. Look how wide a berth Gatlin gives Bogues, but then you can notice in your screen that Wake Forest practically clears the middle for him to give him a lot of room to operate. Bogues almost in backcourt. Gatlin just trying to lay off, making sure that he doesn't get inside. And even giving four or five feet to him, he's liable to just take that first step and gun right past him. This is Watson, good shooter. Missed that one pretty badly, as a matter of fact, and Lewis outlets to Baxter. He'll pull it back. Bias, who had 41 Saturday, his first shot almost an air ball, just barely nicked the rim. Almost took Mark Klein's head off. Bogues to Klein. Maryland again in a man-to-man -man defense, and the key matchup is going to be Gatlin against Bogues. The center is Divert, number 45. Asking Bogues to repeat that last play, couldn't hear him. Now Bogues trying to cut down the middle as they did open up that middle again, and a loose ball knocked out of bounds. Lefty Grizel up applauding as they forced the turnover. Bogues is insisting that he did not throw the ball out of bounds, but he was the last guy that touched it. Good help that time by Maryland. If they're going to come and help Bogues, Wake Forest is probably going to get some open jumpers in the corners. Gatlin and Baxter, the Maryland guards. Now Wake Forest switches again. Larkins is back to that box and one against five. Bogues with a long rebound. He's led the team once in rebounding this year. Gets it off to Watson for the baseline jumper. Won't go. Wake Forest hardly ever gets an offensive rebound. If they do, it seems like it's Bogues. Lewis to Baxter, trying to penetrate. Bogues got, his hand, pass. Bogues got his hand on that, Mike. He dropped down in perfectly and was able to knock the ball away, and it was out off Maryland. Please report to the ticket office in the lot. Klein will inbound, and this is going to be the first sub for Bob Stack. He'll send a freshman guard, Cal Boyd, into the ball game. And he's also got Alan Dickens, who has been with the team for three games now. He's a pre-med student who just walked on after all the personnel problems this club has had. Played 12 minutes in the each of the two games he's been in. That's how bad it's got. And it's got to be a thrill for him. Maybe maybe not now as much as it'll be later. He can tell people that he played in the Atlantic Coast Conference. He has scored one basket in two games. Good job by Baxter. Reaches out to kick it away. They recycle the 45-second clock. That's that circular motion that the official makes for his finger. 15.55 to go first half. We have a timeout. Maryland 6, Wake 3. Back after this from Bud Light. 55 to go first half. Maryland leads Wake Forest 6-3. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot, Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast duplication or reception without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot, Teleproductions is prohibited. Terps up 6-3. Four minutes and five seconds into the first half of play. Watson has uh, been the primary offensive threat for Wake Forest, but he's 0 for 3. Bogues has the only points on the three-point play. There you see Maryland coming to double-team the ball when Bogues does not have the ball. Wake having the floor spread very wide. That gives Bogues room to operate, to penetrate inside, and to kick the ball to an open man. Gatlin will only come out so far on Bogues. The last thing he wants him to do is penetrate. They'll give him an outside shot. Here's a whistle and a foul away from the ball. And it's going to be called on the junior Allen Dickens, number 55. That's his first. The other Deacons aren't just standing around while Tyrone Bogues is dribbling the ball, Mike. They're trying to set screens for one another and spring somebody open. And Dickens got caught that time. He was still moving as he set the screen. Gatlin against some Wake Forest pressure. And you'll notice that Maryland gets rid of the ball whenever Bogues comes by. They don't want to dribble it up the court against Tyrone Bogues. Up, 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 up. 
Straight 2 3 zone by the Deacon. Good touch pass by Gatlin, but Long didn't want to shoot. Maryland moving it very, very well right now. Gatlin to Baxter. He's left open. Got it. Maryland shooting the ball very well early in the game, Mike, but again, all those points are from the outside. 8 3. Maryland. Bogues trying to penetrate. There's the turnover as Lewis gets it out to Gatlin. Nice pass to Baxter. That's the difference Keith Gatlin can make in this ball club. Terry Long made an excellent defensive play. He stood his ground against Bogues. Bogues lost the handle on the basketball. Maryland's doing the most important thing, Mike, against a team that plays slowly, and that is you get the lead, and that changes the game drastically. Dan, you talked about possessions in the, in the game plan before we uh, started. They scored once in seven possessions. There is Terry Long coming behind Gatlin to swat it out of bounds. Wake emphasizes the possessions. There you get a look at Terry Long. Now here's Bogues dribbling down. Now you notice there's no other Deacon in the picture, and if Bogues is going to penetrate, he's so small that he's not really going to be able to shoot the shot against heavy defense. His teammates have to get in positions where they can score once he makes that penetration. It's pretty good defense by Gatlin because Bogues had to double clutch. Gatlin would have blocked it if he put it up the first time. He gave Long time to come over and help out. Cal Boyd there, number 10, is a good outside shooter, as is Klein on the right wing right now. The Deacons seem to be standing around watching Tyrone Bogues, and they're not going to be successful in that man. This is Klein getting by Lewis. Good penetration, but he missed the shot. Rebound follow by Dickens. Mark the pre-med walk-on. Mark Klein is not a person of great quickness, but he showed you there with sort of a ponderous move to the basket what kind of damage the penetration could do. Nobody blocked out Dickens. Good pressure, but Maryland does get it in the front court. It's 10-5 Terrapins with 13-29 to go first half. Long in the lane, wants the ball. I can't get it to him. Good active zone by Wake Forest. Now Bias gets a good pass to Long. That's Bogues. He reached in and knocked away, but Baxter recovered. Can't dribble the ball in there against Wake Forest. Good pass to Long, and he's fouled by Dickens. Dickens doesn't like the call, Mike. That's two fouls against Dickens, but Maryland has shown a couple of times that they can move the ball very successfully. At that time, they got the ball to Long in a position where he didn't have to dribble, and he drew the foul. Gatlin, Tobias, who does not have a shot in this ballgame. Oh, he does have one. Nick the rim. Now he has two. And that one didn't touch it at all. <laughs> that went where it was supposed to. First two for the leading scorer in the ACC. Maryland's looked good so far, Mike. They've done what they had to do against this style of game that Wake Forest is playing. Trying to turn it to their advantage. You notice how Baxter had an opportunity to double team, but didn't dare double team against Bogue. Bogues, they've got him isolated on Gatlin. Gatlin partially blocked that shot, and Bogues double pumped and got it in. That's an awfully tough shot, Mike, and if Maryland is going to limit Wake Forest to, to that style of shot, then I think the Terrapins are, have to be pretty comfortable. 12-25 to go first half, a five-point lead for Maryland, and the Terps have been up by as many as seven. Maryland's playing with a lot of confidence, Mike. They look like a different team than we've seen the last couple times out. Playing like they did against North Carolina, Georgia Tech. They did a loose ball, knocked out of bounds. It'll be out to Maryland. I think Bogues got a hand on that one, too. Bogues just stands in there and waits till you come down and then swats at it. Watson will come back in for Bob Stack, and Alan Dickens will go out. Maryland makes its first substitutions. Gatlin and Lewis will go to the bench for Maryland. John Johnson checks in along with Tom Jones. That's John Johnson, the freshman out of Tennessee. Interesting to see how he and Baxter are able to handle the ball against Wake Forest. I thought Gatlin did a good job when he was in there. Baxter goes to more of a, uh, a point position now. And Johnson takes over the shooting guard spot. Bias showing you can hold the ball in one hand, waving it around. Now something I couldn't do, so I like to see it. <laughs> Lucky if I could hold it in two hands. Shot clock is down to 13 seconds. Johnson had the shot, didn't want to take it, now penetrates and banked it. Boy, what a nice move by Johnson, and that's the penetration against the zone. And look, here comes Wake Forest. And here's the foul. It's going to be on Johnson, and that was a nice burst of speed down there by Larkin. Bogues and Larkins really got down the court. You get a chance to see the end of the play. Wake Forest just beat Maryland down the court. Good foul by Johnson because that was a dump. Two, please. Relax. 
Larkins will go to the line. Another uh, good freshman as Bob Stack tries to rebuild his talent pool. Got a Sarasota floor. Rated as one of the top players in the state as a high school senior. Like he had such a good game against Georgia Tech in the Didn't game that he? he hurt his foot. One of the things that has to have Bob Stack scratching his head just when guys start to come along, they seem to go down. Or leave. That's Divert back in. Of course, well-documented case of Mike Scott, the 6'11 freshman, the only true center they'd had in uh, several years at Wake Forest. He got homesick, went back to Green Up, Kentucky. Free throw is good by Larkins. It's 14 to 9. And we've got another timeout on the court with 11 minutes and 26 seconds to go. A low-scoring affair that we expected. It's Maryland 14, Wake Forest 9. Seconds left in the first half. Maryland on top of Wake Forest 14 to 9. Mike Patrick along with Dan Bonner. Glad you could be with us this evening for ACC basketball. And if you just joined us, we are watching a Maryland team that seems to be playing with a kind of confidence that they showed when they played so well against North Carolina, Georgia Tech, and Duke in that 10-day stretch, even though they lost all of them there, the shooting percentages. And I think the one thing you have to notice with Wake Forest is that they almost always get fewer shots, and they must shoot much better percentage just to match the other team. They certainly haven't shot well enough in this game so far, Mike. In Maryland, they're shooting very well, even though Lenny Bias only has one field goal. Maryland has not been relying on Bias today as they have done recently, and they've had some success looking for other people. Baxter calls out the play. He and Johnson are the guards. Gatlin started a point guard. Did a pretty good job when he was in there. Wake in the 2-3 zone once again. Jones back to Johnson. Penetrating. That's two for really, two. That's really a nice play, Mike. The ball went into the inside against the zone. The zone collapsed. Speedy Jones hit Johnson and then penetrated again. That's really pretty play against the zone. 16-9. Now Baxter has the task of being on Muggsy Bogues. This is Klein. He's guarded by Bias. Great pass to Watson. And Watson missed another shot. Rebound along. Watson now 0 for 4. He's 0 for 4, and he's been such a big part of the offense recently for Wake Forest. They can't afford that. Johnson just collides with everybody. The foul is going to be on number 45, Paul Dybert. Johnson once again showing the ability to penetrate into this Wake Forest defense. Klein is in pretty good position for a charge, but Divert coming over to help out was the guy who committed the foul. And again, Wake Forest does not have a lot of depth or strength inside, and every time Maryland takes it inside, either passing it in or penetrating, that puts a great deal of pressure on the Deacons. Johnson, the Tennessee High School Player of the Year. A little bit better than 70% the free throw line this year. He's been under the weather recently, suffering from a cold and the flu. He looks good out here tonight, though. Tony Massenberg comes in for the first time. Terry Long will sit down for Maryland, and Gatlin comes back in as Baxter will go out. So a uh, pretty normal rotation for Lefty Drizel. Maryland really doing a nice job, Mike. They've got an eight-point lead and stays eight, but Wake Forest is, has not really been able to play their style. Maryland has forced it into an up a little bit faster tempo, I think, than Wake Forest would like. Maryland's biggest game, uh, biggest lead of the year, or of the game, rather, 17 to nine, eight point margin. Great pass to Bogues underneath, who got away and scored. Not only does he do it from outside, Mike, but he posts you up, too. <laughs> That's right. That was just speed that did that. Mer Wake Forest spread out the court away from the basket, and Bogues just blew by. Well, he's not just quick, he's fast, too. 17-11, it's five points for Bogues. Jones in the middle of that zone. Gatlin has really moved the ball very quickly tonight. Bias. After the best scoring performance of his life, Saturday night against Duke, Bias off to a slow start here. I'm sure, Mike, that Lenny Bias would rather have his team win than score 41 points. You're right about that. I'm sure he's very satisfied to be up by six points, even though he's probably not satisfied with his personal offensive effort to this point. This is Diver. That's Massenburg out on Bogues. Now he'll go back out and reload top of the key. Now, like we say, Wake Forest is very comfortable. There's 20 seconds left on the shot clock, and that's plenty of time. Wake doesn't mind using the time. Bogues trying to make that quick move, and Gatlin fell back in the lane, making sure he didn't get in there. Shot clock is at 10, and they want to get the ball to Bogues. He's the only one that seems to be able to create anything. He'll take a long jumper. Lines follow, won't go. Bogues 
for the rebound. <laughs> Maryland didn't block anybody out that time. Klein got the first ball, a bad break for Wake that he missed it. But how did Bogues get in there? He had eight rebounds earlier this year against Davidson. He's led the team in rebounding in one game, tied for the lead three others. Can't ask for much more than that out of this guy. Remember when he first signed, Dan? Everybody said, you got to be kidding. Five-three guy, he can't play in this league. He can't play in any league. Oh, he can play for anybody. That's the truth, Mike. He's quite a player. Gatlin will give him the 15-footer, force him to take it if he can. Watch a good defense by Johnson. Klein has a shot rejected by Massenburg. Excellent defense by Maryland as a team that time. Wake stays in the 2-3 zone, and as we said, it's an aggressive zone. Gatlin, Tobias in the lane. What a pure jump shot. With the size or lack thereof that Wake Forest has inside, Mike, I do not believe they can let Lenny Bias catch the ball there. He'll kill him. He's got four so far. 19-11 Maryland, a very rapidly moving game. 7.47 to go first half. Watson and Klein, the two guys they look to for scoring, are 0-7 from the floor so far. Watson backing in on Johnson. Very good offensive player, very quick. Mike Wake actually came out and played a little bit more quickly to start the game than we expected. This Now that they're down eight points, they seem to have reverted to the slow style to try to catch up. Bogues trying to go to the baseline. Gatlin cut him off. Johnson's done a good job on Watson. And Gatlin reaches in. Shot clock at one. And Watson, the worst shot he has had tonight, an off-balance fadeaway jumper, and he drilled it. Good defense by Maryland. That's a tough break. Good shot by Watson, but Maryland played very hard defensively. alley -oop and Bias put it in. What a catch of a great pass, an even better catch. Bias put it in and drew the foul. This is really something, Mike. He's going to dunk this behind his head on this catch. Look at this. With somebody hanging on him and dunks it in there. Foul will go on line his first. That's six for Bias. He'll go to the free throw line. Bias has hit 17 straight free throws and is the number two free throw shooter in the conference at 85%, and what a physical specimen he is. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking, Mike, if uh, he was permitted to do it, he'd be perfect for one of those health spa ads. They never have guys <laughs> like me that need it. They have guys right. like Lenny. Boy, he'd be good. <laughs> Seven minutes and four seconds left in the first half. Maryland has taken its biggest lead there on top of Wake Forest, 22-13. Tonight we'll be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms players of the game. Seven minutes, four seconds to go first half. Maryland on top of Wake 22-13. Our statistician, Marty Aronoff, got off to a little rough start tonight. Just before we had the tip-off, one of the ball boys was putting all the uh, practice basketballs away and happened to knock over two soft drinks all over Marty and his uh, statistics. So writing on wet paper is not one of the easier things No, it's not, and Marty's shown a remarkable talent for it. He can adjust to anything. 7.04 left, 22-13, Maryland by nine. Here comes Bogues. Bob Stack has Bogues on the court right now with Mark Klein, Larkins, Watson, and Alan Dickens. Wake Forest has to do a better job converting their possession. Watson misses again. Larkins tried to keep it alive. Gatlin comes down. Speedy Jones had him blocked out, Mike, and Speedy Jones was just a little too big. Larkins is a very good jumper, but Maryland's size paid off on that occasion. Speedy Jones is one of those guys who never does anything that uh, hardly even that you notice, but he's very good on the basics of this game. Johnson penetrates again. Tough shot. Time after time, Mike, he's made that penetration move, and he's created open shots for himself as well as for his teammates, and Maryland is in complete control. Johnson, who averages six and a half points a game, already has seven. Wake Forest has scored 13 points in 13 minutes, approaching 14 minutes of basketball. Mike, they've a point a minute hardly uh, gives you much of a chance, doesn't it? No, it sure doesn't. They've, they've hardly had any good shots. One of their buckets was that Watson took was a terrible shot that went in. How about some credit for uh, the defense that Lefty Grizzell has designed for this? Absolutely, Mike. They're playing very hard in the man-to-man -man defense. They're helping one another out very well. That's Klein, an off-balance jumper. It won't go, but he'll get the foul at least. Klein coming off the screen. As Cal Boyd comes in the game for Wake Forest. Johnson went to help and committed the foul. 
number two on Johnson. Wake Forest has the, has the floor very spread out. You see a good screen there. Johnson, as he's coming over to help on the screen, was a little bit late and got Klein on the arm. Klein has hit only eight of his last 28 field goals coming into this ball game. Always been a great free throw shooter. He is 0 for 3 tonight, so that makes him 8 out of his last 31. It's about 26, 27 percent. Mark Klein is a much better shooter. Well, he is, Mike, but probably in the last few games, he's gotten much more defensive attention than he's ever gotten before. Hits both free throws, 24-15. They cut it back to 9. And coming in for the first time, senior D. Calvert out of Memphis, Tennessee. And he'll replace Klein, give him a breather. Back in for really not much Klein. offense along the front line for Wake Forest right now. Hardly at all, except for Larkins. Because they've got Dickens, who averages one point a game, and D. Calvert, who averages 2.8. Got to beat the 10-second clock. Gatlin beat it by one, gets it to Bias, who just soars with that jump. Missed it, but Maryland will keep it alive. Credit Massenburg with that as Lewis gets the loose ball. Nobody blocked him out, Mike, and we said one of the things that Wake Forest had to do was control their defensive board. Maryland has had more than a couple second opportunities tonight. Gatlin inside to Lewis, and Lewis travels. He just lost track of where he was on the court. Mike turned around and started to jump up and realized that he was underneath the backboard. Couldn't bring himself down fast enough. 24-15. We're approaching the five-minute mark of the first half. This is Cowboy. Good shooter. Got away from Bias, and they switch. Massenburg gets on him. Missed the shot. Rebound goes to Lewis. Maryland has dominated the defensive board. That's five rebounds for Derek Lewis, the sophomore forward. Johnson wants to bring it out. Whoa, what a fast-moving first half. Not many fouls, not many stoppages of play. 24-15 is our score. Johnson penetrating again. He's been perfect when he does it, and he still is. Young man is having himself quite a game, Mike. He's got nine points already, and Maryland with its biggest lead of 11 points matched again. Oh, the Turks have really dominated this ball game. It's interesting, Mike. Maryland is not playing really that much overplay defense, but despite that fact, they're forcing Wake Forest to start the offense about 30 feet from the basket. And as the clock runs down, Wake doesn't seem to get any closer. Wake is shooting only 31%. Bogues trying to penetrate, got it blocked by Massenburg. That's one thing that they've been able to do is when he penetrates, somebody's waiting. Oh. Gatlin, oh, what a pass, and Bias sort of smiles like, well, maybe I should have had that one. I didn't look up quick enough. Was a great pass. Of oh. course, the thing that makes the pass great, Mike, is when somebody catches it. It looked real good, but it turned out to be a bad pass because it surprised Bias so much he couldn't catch it. That's right. 3.59, first half. It's Maryland 26, Wake Forest 15. We'll be back right after this. You know what? Make you Mr. Wrong. Get the right spray. I had enough of Mr. Wrong. I want to be Mr. Right. 59 seconds to go. First half, Maryland leading Wake Forest by 11. Muggsy Bogues doing his part. He's three out of six from the field. Hit a free throw. The rest of the team is shooting a none too crisp two for 11. Mike, even though Muggsy Bogues has become more important in the offense as a scorer, as you see Lefty Drizel sending his team back on the court, the place where Bogues is most effective is passing off to his teammates. Maryland has done a nice job helping out and limiting that ability by Bogues, and his teammates, when he has gotten them the ball, as you say, they have not been able to convert. Mark Klein tells Bogues uh, he'd like to run a certain play, so Bogues backs it out and they'll start it again. Both teams with 17 field goal attempts in the first half. You see the disparity on the ones that are made. Wake Forest now trying to run some things to get Mark Klein open along the baseline, but again, Maryland with excellent defense. Klein tried to toss it into Calvert, who lost the ball, then fell down. alley -oop to Bias. Turnaround baseline jumper. 28-15. The lead is soared to 13 points. Bias got away with dribbling on the floor right next to Muggsy Bogues. Bias even has a quick dribble. Now here is Lewis on Bogues. I think this is a mistake. Lewis is 6'7". 
And look how far he'll lay back. You better believe he's going to stand there in the red, Mike. He's not going to come out and try to guard Boggs. They will come out only to deny him, and Boggs got the ball anyhow. Penetrates. Shot wouldn't go for the young man. Loose ball. Here comes Johnson from Maryland. That's actually good defense by Lewis. Boggs penetrated by, but he went right into the help, and then with Lewis's size, Boggs couldn't get a good shot. Gatlin kicks it back to Johnson. He wants to penetrate. Got the bucket. And offensive foul called on Johnson, but he scored again. And Johnson has 11 points on five for five from the floor. Somebody must have been talking to this young man right there. Cowboy gets in and draws the charge. But somebody must have been saying something to Johnson about somebody picking up the slack for Lenny Bias because Johnson has been aggressive tonight, and now he goes and takes a well-deserved rest. Plus, he's sitting down because he has three personal fouls now. Baxter comes back into the ballgame. We have 2.35 to go in the half. Maryland has doubled Wake Forest's offensive output in the first 17 and a half minutes. Wake Forest does not look as sharp tonight, Mike, as they have in their last three games. I think one of the reasons, Dan, may be that nobody has played this defense against them. I mean, I'm not totally sure about that, but it appears that way. Klein working for a shot. Gatlin right on top of him. Then he fired up an air ball. Wake Forest has been successful because Bogues has been able to get his teammates open shot, but that's not true tonight. Bias got the ball to Long, wanted it back, and Long delivered, and Lenny lost it out of bounds. Last touch by a Wake Forest player, so it's out to Maryland. Right now, they just seem to be in total control. It looks like they're gliding, Mike. It doesn't even look very hard. And in the last couple of weeks, things have looked very hard. Maryland scored 11 of the last 13 points to go up by 15. Lewis, low to bias, got it in there, put it on the floor. And it's out once again to Maryland. He's lucky to hang on to it, Mike. Can't be dribbling the ball in there. Shot clock is at 14 seconds. It does not recycle on something like that. Massenberg in the lane. His first try, he has two. And Lefty Drizel, who has never lost six games in a row in his life as a coach, doesn't want this one to be the one. He doesn't know how to act over there, Mike. He forgets what it's like to have a 17-point lead. No, he doesn't know what it's like to uh, lose five games in a row, either. Yeah, that's for sure. Lefty's getting a lot of new things thrown at him this year. <laughs> I'm sure he likes the 17-point lead better than the five-in-a-row loss. Uh, you don't win 515 games in your career if you have too many of those five-game losing streaks, I'll tell you. Bogues from outside this time won't go. Another Maryland rebound off those boards this time. It's bias. I think Wake Forest has two follows in this ballgame. Bogues now three of eight from the floor. This is Gatlin, the 19-footer. Maryland just doing it all the way you're supposed to right now, 34-15. The Deacons have to wonder what all this talk was about Maryland playing for. Maryland has scored 10 straight. I think it must not be a mistake. That's Lewis again. I thought he was matched up against Bogues on a switch, but he's not. That's an indication of the way they're trying to play, because Lewis isn't going to follow him around. He's going to stay inside. Pass saved inside by Wake. That was Marco Pickett who's into the ball game, a red shirt football player who played his first game earlier this year for Wake Forest one day after he started practice with the team. So Bob Stack has had to go when you see anybody, I guess in Boat's case, over 5-3 on campus, you ask them to come out. And no basket. We've got a foul. Be on bias, I believe. It's eight seconds to go. And now we've got, uh, I'm sorry, we had uh, Dwayne Owens, number 23. We had Marco Pickett listed as 23, but it is Dwayne Owens in the ball game. They switched numbers since the last ball game, or I switched them, one or the other. Free throw by Bogues is good. Bogues has eight points of Wake's 16, and that's what he's been doing the last few ball games, producing or assisting on at least half of the points. Hits another one. Joe Blair, uh, publicity director here in Maryland, just gave us the official attendance. This is a trip, sort of a tribute to Maryland fans. 11,950 showed up for this one. Gatlin with a long shot trying to beat the buzzer, doesn't do it. And that is the end of the first half as Maryland leaves the court with a comfortable lead.
Our score at halftime from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park is Maryland 34, Wake Forest 17. And we'll be back with our halftime show from College Park right after this message from Bud Light. The game tonight will be choosing a player from each team as the Holly Farms Players of the Game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Holly Farms Players of the Game to be announced near the conclusion of our broadcast tonight. 34-17, Maryland on top of Wake Forest. Uh, I like statistics. Before we take a look at these, we've we've got one to pass on to you. Paul Evans, who is also helping us for statistics tonight, said in the first half, Wake Forest had 516 dribbles. And not only that, but Tyrone Bogues had 453 of those dribbles. Which is? Which is a, almost 88%. So Bogues is handling the ball for Wake Forest 88% of the time. You can see Wake Forest field goal percentage under 24%. You're just not going to win very much with that. No. Uh, the, the game didn't really cause many turnovers. Both teams were pretty good with the basketball, but Maryland shooting 68%, Wake Forest 23. It's obvious why Wake Forest is down by 17. We talked about how Wake Forest had to do a good job with their possessions. Now, lots of times when coaches evaluate possessions, a lot of coaches would say that one point per possession is very good. Wake Forest has 17 points in 29 possessions, which is .6, which is terrible. But look at this. Bogues with nine points. Nobody else with more than two. Uh, Klein was 0 for 4 from the floor in the first half. Watson was 1 for 6. Maryland with a, with a balanced attack. Johnson with 11 points on 5 for 5 shooting. Bias, he's going to get his. Maryland guards Mike Gatlin, Baxter, and Johnson are 10 for 13 in the first half. And Wake Forest with a terrible first half shooting percentage missed 10 of its last 11 shots in a half. See what Bob Stack can come up with at halftime. This is Watson. Little spinning move. Nice pass. Dropped it off and long. Got a big arm up there and caused a problem underneath. That's exactly characteristic of the way it went in the first half, Mike. Wake Forest was not able to get very many clean shots at the basket. Good defense by the Turks. And Long got a hand up that time and stuffed Larkins. Wake Forest is awfully small, Mike. They drive in there, and even though Maryland doesn't have a lot of tall players, Lewis and Bias are excellent jumpers. Bias gets it back outside. What do you want, Black? Whistle away from the ball, and it's going to be a foul on Larkins for trying to hold in there. That'll be his second. That's something we didn't see very many of in the first half either personal fouls. The game was played in such a manner that there just weren't very many to be called. Gatlin will inbound. In case you joined us late at 34-17 Maryland. It has uh, been the Terrapins game all the way. Long threw it away, but Gatlin got it back. Or rather, Derek Lewis threw it away and Gatlin got it back. Now it's out of bounds. Off of Muggsy Bogues, who went to the floor trying to save it. Well, he went to the floor with some assistance from Terry Long. Tripped over Long and fell down. I sort of like that dribbling statistic. If you don't have anything else to do and you're at home, maybe you can uh, keep that. Oh, who in the world is going to count dribble? I don't know, but you probably drive your wife crazy, wouldn't you? <laughs> 518, 519, 520, 521. She'd think it was time to, to fasten that jacket that snaps in the back. Here's another whistle. Got a foul inside on Paul Dybert. Once again, Maryland attacking on the inside of that zone. Oh, Two on Diver. Long posted up inside. Diver was behind him. Diver tried to knock the ball away. Maryland just doing everything right. Baxter from outside. And Maryland shooting with a great deal of confidence right now. And Baxter is in with eight points, the senior from Washington. And this is the biggest Maryland lead at 36-17. Wake Forest has been completely stymied so far by Maryland's defense. Watson finally gets one down from inside. Wake Forest is here. Now they're trying to press. Now they didn't get it organized very well because a couple guys forgot what they were supposed to do. But Wake Forest now is forced to press to pick up the tempo of the game to try to get back in it. And to pick up the tempo is really the last thing that they wanted to do coming into the bias banks at home. That's 11 for Lenny Bias. He had a quiet nine in the first half with the exception of that behind-his-head dunk off the alley-oop. 
He is now the fourth leading all-time scorer. He has surpassed uh, Tom McMillan in Maryland history. Watson to Divert in the lane, turnaround jumper, partially blocked by Long. This is Larkin. Great vertical jump, kept it alive after missing it, followed by Divert. That's something you didn't see much of in the first half, Mike. Wake Forest really banging on the offensive board. First two points for the freshman from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, who's been forced to do it the hard way, thrust into a role that he has to play in the middle. 38-21, this is Baxter who's got the hot hand. Jeff Baxter knocks it home. He has 10, and it's 40-21 to terms. Everything Maryland does tonight, Mike, seems to be working. Wake was back in the diamond and one or box and one against Bias, and Maryland didn't even take note of it. Baxter just drilled it. Baxter has hit five of six. Bogues, they lay off of him. This is Klein, who had two points in the first half. The team's leading scorer long blocked the shot, and they'll call him for the foul. I thought it was a pretty good block, but two officials threw the hand up together. Mike, officials don't like certain things, and one of the things officials don't like is blocked shots. <laughs> and Terry Long, he's blocked a couple in there, and so they finally got him. They decided three or four is enough, they're going to get him one. Well, he looked like he did block the shot, but then uh, on the replay, which is uh, the advantage we have, he came through and did hit Klein on the hand. And Klein is not the guy you want to send to the free throw line. He doesn't shoot that many but he is an 82.5% free throw shooter. Klein has had to work so much harder this year at things that you never expected him to do before. Uh, he has worked hard on his inside game, mostly been a perimeter player in his entire career. He's just been forced to do it. That's the first free throw Wake has missed tonight. Up to that point, they were 8 for 8 from the line. 40-22. This is Lewis. 16-56 left in the ballgame. Maryland, after its first ACC win of the year, after the worst start in Lefty Grizzell's coaching career here in 17 years. You can see Larkins following Lenny Bias around. Brett on him, but he's too small. Bias operating inside. Wake Forest is just too small inside to really have a lot of success with that. Well, it's 6-4 against 6-8. As much as Larkins can jump, Bias can jump, too. There's a nice shot by Klein off the glass. Gatlin almost lost it. When you see Bogues coming, you give up the ball. That's the safest way to play it. Klein's trying to get back in and help, but when Bias is in there like he is right now with Larkins behind him, now there's two guys on Bias. And Long will try his luck. 44-24, the lead skies to 20. And this defense has done a great job of keeping Muggsy Bogues out of the lane where he's so dangerous. Watson to the point. Wake Forest only had one assist in the first half, and this is the player who leads the country in assists. That's the key to that defense, Mike. They've decided that they're going to worry about Bogues' assists, that they're not going to be that concerned about his score. Terry Long hits two straight, 46-26. That's four points for Long, who averages 3.1 points a game. And if they can get play like that out of the 6'8 junior from Glen Allen, Virginia, Maryland is still going to be a threat to people down the stretch. They've got a lot of talent on the basketball team, Mike. This, is a, this game ought to be a great confidence builder for them. And they can sure use a shot out of it. Bogues calling out. Klein. This is Watson. Neither one has had a good shooting night. But Watson with a great drive. Bias. Bias blocked it. This is Diver. He's blocked by Derek Lewis. And Bias. Uh, take a pick right there. They both came after him. Well, you see Wake Forest's real lack of height and jumping ability inside has killed him. And Baxter. Now, Baxter, this is the kind of a guard, uh, game guards dream of. He's just made everything in sight. Six out of seven has a dozen. Mike, and Muggsy Bogues, the expression on his face as he caught that inbounds pass and turned to bring it up the court was one of real pain. He just doesn't know what's going on. Klein, nice play to score inside, 48-28. Now, again, Wake Forest is trying to get a press coming up the court, but Larkins and Divert... Both went down the court, and Lewis brings the ball up, so there's no pressure there. Gatlin trying to penetrate, kicks it off to Bias. He's great from 17, dishes it in the long. Now you see Land Bias, who is the leading scorer in the league, has a chance to become the number one all-time scorer for Maryland if he scores a lot of points in the remaining games, is not a gunner. He is not a greedy player. 
That's a great pass inside to Long, finding an open guy. Line, they've decided he's got to shoot. Larkins with a rebound gives it back to Bogues. Now, a lot of guys might have taken that shot in the position Bogues had, but he's just so small. Gatlin was there, he could have blocked it. Bias is guarding Larkins. Well, that's a tough, tough job for Arthur. Larkins trying to get the ball. Lewis knocked the ball away, and there's Bogues. Almost saved it, lost it out of bounds. Boy, you turn your head for a second, and he's by five people and has his hands on the basketball. He certainly hasn't quit, Mike. 13 minutes, 29 seconds to go in the ballgame from College Park. It's Maryland 50, Wake 28. We'll be back right Ladies after this. Special thanks to you. 50 to 28. The Terps have hit all eight oh, shots play, play. this half and are shooting 77% for the ballgame. Mike, they've exploited the weakness of Wake Forest on the inside to perfection. Johnson is in for Gatlin at guard. He's in there with Baxter. Good pass inside to Tom Jones, who's checked in, and Jones scores. Maryland spreading it around very well. First two points of the night for Tom Jones. The lead is 24. Bogues tried to go end to end. Loose ball. And it's out to Maryland. Wake Forest still hustling that Dickens on the floor after the ball. Tyrone Bogues blew down the court, was almost past everybody, but again, you saw the difficulty he's been having all night. He got in there, big hands, jumping up, blocking the ball. And in case you haven't seen, uh, we haven't watched Wake Forest in a few games and don't know who Dickens is, you shouldn't. He just joined the team three games ago, a 6'8 junior pre-med student. Johnson going for the, or rather Larkins going for the steal, almost had it. No, they're still hustling, and that's that's the one trademark with all the problems they have had. They have played hard for Bob Stack, and he's got to be very proud of his kids. He switched defenses again. They've only shown zone in that box and one, but now they're in a straight man-to-man -man defense. They've got to pick up the tempo. This is Massenberg in the ball game. Put it on the floor, lost it, makes the bucket, and he'll get the foul. Maryland still hasn't missed one this half, Mike. This is amazing. Good pass inside. Excellent cut by Massenberg to get in position. He made a mistake dribbling the basketball, but he had enough strength to get the ball up to the basket. Oh, the foul on Dickens, his third, 12.31 to go. And Massenberg will go to the free throw line. Missed the free throw. Cal Boyd with a rebound quickly to Bogues. Bogues right in the middle of a big crowd as Maryland does an excellent job getting back on defense and stopping his penetration. This is D. Calvert to Klein to Boyd. Boyd's a good outside shooter, hasn't touched the ball too much. Baxter laying off Bogues and he'll take a long jump shot and he cans that one. Mike, you have to give up something and that's what Maryland's been willing to concede. 54-30, Bias will bring it up court. Now Bias wanted to shake and bake maybe and then gives it up. Maryland has hit all 10 of its field goals in this half and leads by 24. Oh, if you're going to make them all, you don't lose. That's what Villanova had to do last year to beat Georgetown in the final. Virtually made them all. Massenburg. Almost got that Jamal Wilkes kind of release when he holds the ball back behind his shoulder. Klein trying to penetrate off the void. Bogues. Once again, you see the Maryland defense dropping back inside to try to cut down on Bogues' penetration. As quick as he is, he just has a terrible time trying to get in there. That's the jumper by D. Calvert. D. Calvert. He doesn't normally shoot very much, Mike. Made that one his first two of the night at 54-32. Wake trying to increase the tempo. Bogues gambling. Mike, once you make the decision to go to that slower style, as Wake Forest did, the hardest thing to do is play an up-tempo game, which they're forced to do now. Massenburg, low to back, posted up on Bogues, and here's the foul. Pointing at Calvert. Calvert and Bias knocking into one another. That's something we haven't seen any of tonight. There's been no physical exchanges inside. It's on Calvert, his first. Here comes Lewis back into the ball game for Maryland. And Len Bias will go out for a breather. Gets a nice hand as he goes to the uh, Maryland sideline. Bias uh, with 13 points. He's the leading scorer for the turf. Baxter has a dozen. Johnson's checked in with 11. 
Free throw is good by Baxter. There's Len Bias. He doesn't Terrific get too many. Yeah, boy, he sure is. He doesn't get too many breathers in these basketball games. He doesn't, does he? Against Duke, he played 39 minutes the other night where he had his 41 points. Time out on the court with the score, Maryland 56 and Wake Forest 32. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. 47 seconds left in this one. Maryland comfortably in front since the beginning. Right now, the Terps are up 56 to 32. And here are the all-time scoring leaders in Maryland history. Len Bias has replaced Tom McMillan in number four. And he's got a shot at catching Albert King at 2,058. Those include the points he has scored tonight. He's going to have to continue that 23-point average. He's going to have to make sure that his team plays two, maybe three games in the ACC tournament if they don't go on to get in the NCAA. And a lot of people would say uh, right now they're 10 and 8. Uh, it's going to be pretty tough to get in there, although I think they played one of the toughest schedules in the country. Man, if they, they have like 10 games left after tonight, and if you count tonight's game, if they win, say, 7 or 8 of those last 11 and maybe win a game in the tournament, then I think they would have a legitimate chance. G. Calvert with a double pump, got a couple of players in the air and scored and drew the foul. Nice move by the senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Wake Forest has not had too much luck going inside tonight. Calvert actually lost control of the basketball, but he kept that pivot foot very well until he drew Massenburg off his feet. Nice play by Calvert. Four points for Calvert. Make it five, and it's 56 to 35. This is Baxter, who will bring it up against Cal Boyd. Right now, Muggsy Bogues is getting one of those rare breathers. And I mean rare. Baxter lets it go out of bounds, and he was the last one that touched it. Lefty Grizzell doesn't like the call. Happened right in front of him. He's up talking to Dick Paparo. Uh, I think Lefty's just trying to get in practice for maybe another game when he needs it. <laughs> so just keeping his voice loose. <laughs> the only the fourth turnover of the game for Merrill. This line is back in for Wake. He wants the ball low. Watson instead will take a tough shot and make it. Mike Watson missed four wide open jumpers in the first half, and every one that he's made has been one of those tough turnarounds. Speedy Jones at the other end. Maybe that's the secret of the Watson. You leave him alone, you stick all over him, and he bangs him home. 58-37, Maryland still comfortably in front. Made virtually everything they've shot in the second half. Maryland continues in the man-to-man -man defense. Boyd waves uh, his teammates inside. Wake Forest has not been able to penetrate inside. They've been forced by Maryland to start their offense very far away from the basket. Johnson trying to come on the double team. This is Boyd in the lane. A nice shooting touch. Cal Boyd has his first two, and it's 58-39. The lead is cut under 20 for the first time in about eight minutes. I'm sure Coach Lefty Brazil would like his Terps to continue to play hard as we go down the stretch. They've got a comfortable lead, and I'm sure he doesn't want them to relax. Watson committed the personal foul. And Muggsy Bogues will come back in, as will Len Bias, the two most... Uh, Famous players on their respective squads. Tom Jones will go out. Boyd and D. Calvert check out for Wake Forest. And Larkins has come back in for Bob Stack. This is Gatlin who calls out the five play with eight minutes and 56 seconds left to go in this game. Larkins is really trying to stick close to Lenny Bias. That's an interesting matchup between those two off the ball. Johnson. Bias wanted the alley-oop. Well, he sure did. He was trying to jump and get it. Now they get it to him. Triple teamed at the baseline. You can forget it. Put it in the book when he gets it that close. 60 to 39. Bias has 15. Wake Forest has gone to the man-to-man -to, -man to try to put some pressure in the backcourt, but one of the problems is you match Larkins up against Bias, and four or five inches smaller inside, you just can't guard Lenny Bias. Watson from downtown still won't go. Gatlin had a fingertip on it, lost it out of bounds. He and Dick Paparo exchanging a little grin. Easy for Maryland players to smile right now. They're up by 21. Don't see too many giggles on the Wake Forest side. Now they're a solemn-looking bunch over there, Mike. That's for sure. This is Klein. 
Well, what a good shooter. Mark Klein has nine points, and it's 60 to 41. Maryland has attacked this man-to-man -man defense very well. They've gotten the ball inside. Here they go again. Gatlin trying to penetrate back to Johnson. Johnson has been so good with that here in this ball game, penetrating and missing the shot. That was off the hand of Dickens, picked up by Bo. It's first Johnson missed tonight from the field. Watson. It was an air ball. Somebody may have got a fingertip on it. Vogues reached in, committed the foul, hacking Lewis. I don't think anybody got a fingertip on that, Mike, but that was a pretty tough play. Watson is a right-handed player, and he was driving to the basket where the obvious shot would have been with the left hand, but he didn't put it up with the left hand. 7.34 left to go in this one from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park. It's Maryland 60, Wake Forest 41. Tonight we'll be choosing a player from each team, both Wake Forest and Maryland, as the Holly Farms players of the game. Also, the Fieldhouse cleaning crew requests your assistance by... 7.34 left in this one, 60 to 41. Maryland leading Wake Forest. Marty Ernoff has been through the uh, Maryland record book right now. Their field goal percentage record is for a game is 83.3%. Tonight they've hit 75. Carry along with the walk there. 83.3%. That must, what, of 1918 they did that? Well, they hit 15 out of 18 shots. That's not a lot of shots. No, that's what I'm looking at. If you, if you shoot twice that many, you make 30 out of 36, then you've done something. Sounds like they must have had the peach basket up and the jump ball have. after every uh, basket. A lot of, of two-handed set shots. <laughs> 7.14 to go in this one. Maryland comfortably up by 19, and Lewis is back on Bogues. This is Klein. Bogues free this time for a jumper and got it. Again, Mike, that's not what Maryland has been concerned about. They have been playing in the lane. Lewis that time, he forgot about Bogues. He just went in for rebound. Gatlin across to Johnson, trying to penetrate. Oh. Thanks another one home. John Johnson has had a big game, 13 points. Klein. He's deadly. You can give him some room. Klein has 11 at 62-45. And he's had some room the last couple times, Mike, but that's the first time in the game that he's had it. Now, John Johnson just got a lesson there. When Tyrone Bogues is guarding you, give the ball to somebody else. Or you hold it over your head where the one thing he can't make up for hurts him. He can't reach over your head. Johnson. There he goes. He learned the lesson well. His bias, Bogues, came from behind, took it away. He's ninth in the country in steals. And Long almost returned to favor. Got a hand on it. Bogues from outside, short. What a chance to cut it to uh, 15 points there, but they didn't get it. Amazing thing about Bogues is he makes so many of those steals from behind, but most of the time when a guy's coming from behind at that speed, he just knocks the ball out of bounds. Look at him. Boy, you could, pretty play. you could see that coming. Mike Bias pointed at the basket and took off. The basket support is still shaking. 17 points for Bias. He's hit 8 out of 12 from the floor. And that alley-oop pass is tough to throw. Go out sometime in the playground where there's a hoop and see how many times you can put that thing where it has to be put. 64-45, margin is 19. This is Watson, who has not had a good shooting night. Give me that! And Bias. I think did you hear Bias said, give me that. He sure did, Mike. Now here's Bias on the offensive end. What a great pass. Just nobody can get up there with that. On the defensive end, you can tell how comfortable Maryland is. The shot went up, and you can clearly hear Len Bias say, give me that. And give it to him, indeed, they did. Bogues over Lewis. Burned him from 19 feet. It's 64-47. Here's Johnson ahead of the pack, trying to beat Bogues. Oh, God. Well, the tempo has picked up just a little. Bogues will get it back. Alan Dickens, 55, wants the ball inside. Coming into this game, he's scored one field goal in his college career. He had one tonight. He had to tip in early in the game. So that makes two in three games. Just Watson from outside. 66 to 49. This is Wake Forest's only chance trying to pick up the tempo. Watson has 10 tonight. Bias in the lane. He just hangs there. 
19 for the ACC's leading scorer, who averages 23. Bogues isn't even breathing hard. Klein. Oh, Wake Forest all of a sudden has found the shooting range, but they're down by 17. Klein has 13 points. You may have found it a little too late, Mike, but you're right. The last couple of times, Klein in particular drilled it in the basket. Well, they're at the point now where everybody has to look for a shot, whether they want to or not. Gatlin lost control, picked up by Dickens. He almost lost it. Here comes Bowles. Watson. They may shoot themselves back into this. 68-53 down by 15. Time now their biggest enemy. Four minutes even to go. It's going to be very hard for Wake Forest. Now, Lefty Drizel's calling a timeout, Mike, because he does not want them coming back in the game. But Wake Forest... And so little firepower that's going to be awfully difficult to make up a lead of that amount. Especially if they work the clock a little, which we think they'll do. Timeout on the court. Maryland by 15. We'll be back right after this. Is brought to you in part by Mazda and Holly Farms. 3.53 to go. The lead is 15. Let's see what Wake Forest has come up with for the last three minutes and 53 seconds. When we come back, Maryland will have the basketball, and you'd think that the Turks would run off a little time. Iowa State, don't know how late that one is, but they are leading Kansas 60 to 54. That would be a major upset. Syracuse had no problem, apparently, with Boston College. And Louisville over LaSalle, a final 72 to 60. Maryland shooting 79% from the field for this ball game. And right now, they'll try to work the clock a little bit. Mike, it's hard to lose if you shoot 79%. Hard to believe. <laughs> then they get an offensive rebound after missing that shot. So they've got another 45 seconds on the clock to work it. Wake Forest has gone into a zone trap. They're going to try to trap Maryland on him. Oh, that's the kind of thing that they risk. Lenny Bias, 21 points. He's going to pull the rim down here in a minute. But when he starts for the bucket, uh, the wise players clear out. D. Calvert. Dickens really battling inside for position against Terry Long. The young man's a pre-med student talking about Dickens. Ooh. That a tough pass by Bogues. You'd, uh, you'd have to know that was coming in advance to be wearing a suit of armor to handle it. You'd have to be on the team for more than eight days to catch it. That's right. Three minutes even. And Maryland by 17. It looks like the Terps are going to get that elusive first ACC win. Lewis uh, did what he was supposed to do. Instead of taking an open shot, he brings it back outside. Yes, Jack! And there is Terry Long. And it's 72-53. Eight points for Long. When the other club gets close to 70, you know Wake Forest is going to be in trouble. Wake Forest really has to play games, Mike, in the high 40s, low 50s with that style. There, Lewis gets another block. Lewis, who blocked uh, 90 shots a year ago, a team record at 10 in one game, is below that this year, but uh, has still blocked more than 35 shots on the season. 2.14 left. Wake Forest back to the man-to-man. -man. This is Gatlin posted up on Bogues, and he is fouled by Bogues as he goes up for the shot. Maryland really hasn't had occasion to try to do that very much tonight, Mike. Wake Forest has been in a man-to-man -man for an extended period of time. But they haven't needed to take Muggsy Bogues inside. Lenny Bias gets a nice hand as he goes out of the ball game. Bias hit his last seven shots and scored 21 points in this ball game after a slow start. And Dave Dickerson, number 23, 6'6", six, six freshman from Olar, South Carolina, is in for the first time. Now we're going to get David Gregg, number 40, another freshman from Hyattsville. He comes in for the first time, and Lewis will go down, sit down. Long will sit down, and it's uh, Speedy Jones back in the ball game. Lewis leaves with two points, but three block shots and nine rebounds. Gatlin hits the free throw, and the lead is back to 20. Five points for Keith Gatlin. Missed the Duke game, and that certainly hurt Maryland. Had back spasms. 74-53. 
Mike. watching the board. Coach Lefty Drizel just leaned down the bench and leaned out and made a fist sign to Len Bias, who returned it. They're very pleased with that the ball game tonight. Loose ball out of bounds off of Larkins will go to Maryland with 1.51 to go. Terps had lost five straight, as we told you. Lefty Drizel had never lost six straight at any coaching level, high school or, or college, anything. And he's not going to do it here. He will raise the record to 11-8 overall, 1-6 in the ACC. And there is the layup for David Gregg. The freshman from Hyattsville played at the same high school as Len Bias did, Northwestern High. This is Boyd left alone for the jump shot. It won't go this time. And the rebound, there will be a foul, I believe, on Dickerson over the back. Dickerson going over the back of Larkins. Larkins was in pretty good position for the rebound. And again, that's something Wake Forest has had none of tonight, Number offensive rebound. Dave Dickerson, his first 13 foul. Now, this is a good opportunity. The guys who sit on the bench, and I can tell you this from personal experience, they always like games like this because you get in to play. The coach always gets mad, though, when you commit fouls or something, so they have to, uh, they've got to be careful. They don't want to get Lefty Drizel angry with them. We've got uh, Billy Robinson, number five, checks in for the first time. And we've got Clay Day, number four. <laughs> Maryland with the rebound. This is Dickerson all the way and missed the jam. He's going to hear about that. The players really get on you when you miss one of those. Yeah, you also get a little embarrassed. <laughs> Clay Date is listed at 5'10 and can't be. There's Robinson who puts the shot up, rejected. Loose ball, Maryland, Speedy Jones with the rebound. He's double teamed and backcourt dribbles through it. This is Greg Narrod who's in for the first time. Freshman guard from Wilmington, Ohio. Loose ball. Just a little sloppy right now. Dade, nice fake. He has his first two. 76-55. Gatlin in backcourt against Dade. Now, you got to credit Bob Stack right here. He's not telling his players just to go out and commit intentional fouls. He's not using his timeout. He's just going to go quietly into that good night. He's got really no choice, Mike. There's no sense kicking and screaming about it. And we'll clear the bench for both ball clubs. This is Dwayne Owens, number 34, checking in. Uh, college football star at Wake Forest. And Marco Pickett, number 23, will be coming uh, back in. He's got to be out there somewhere. There's Pickett. Now, we told you there was a, uh, a numbers foul up in the first half. Pickett is wearing 23, and Dwayne Owens is wearing 34. We want to clear that up. This is David Gregg with 19 seconds left. Mike, well, it's, it's amusing for the Maryland players to got guys on the bench to come in and play when they're up this much. The guys from Wake Forest, it's not quite such a big thrill. No. Although, uh, even though they won't be smiling, they like to get in anyhow. I just like to work the kinks out. Oh. Wow. A little strong on that one. Got a foul against Greg Nairn on the inside. Oh, against Massenburg. Now they're starting uh, the chorus of Amen here in Cole Fieldhouse. Haven't heard it in a while. You almost sense that there's a certain relief in their singing the Amen. It's not really a, a frantic thing like you'd have after a game over a big rival, but there's certainly a feeling of relief in this game. That's right. Crowd streaming out of Cole Fieldhouse right now. Robinson missed the boat. Ball's tipped outside. Speedy Jones with a rebound. And it's taken away by Robinson, and he lost it out of bounds with six seconds to go. Maryland in control since this ball game started. The Terps uh, came up with a nifty defensive plan. Here's uh, another interception by Robinson, and he steps out of bounds with it. Still six seconds to go. Maryland's going to get the ball in bounds now. Massenburg tries to go to the basket, but that's the way those things happen sometimes. One second left. Clay Day got it off in time, but the shot won't go. And Maryland will leave Cole Fieldhouse tonight with a very comfortable 77-55 win. The Terps hit 34 of 47 field goals in this ballgame. That's 72 
50%. And as we said, Maryland wins its first ACC game, one and six on the year. Our Holly Farms players of the game are Mark Klein from Wake Forest, who scored 13 points and had three bounds, and John Johnson from the University of Maryland, who had 15 points, but more importantly, hit seven out of nine from the floor, came through with two assists. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the ACC to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. Again, our Holly Farms players of the game, Klein and Johnson from Wake Forest and Maryland, respectively. Right now, let's get down to Dan Bonner. He has uh, what should be a very happy lefty, Drizel, who got that first Thank ACC you very win. Much. Thank you very much, Mike Patrick. Coach, you must be very relieved to finally get one under your belt. I thought we played well tonight. You know, people have been uh, having trouble with Wake because they do a good job of slowing the ball down. And uh, we want to get out and play man-for-man -man defense and pressure them and not let them hold the ball. And we jumped out to early lead and we had the game under control most of the way. I was very pleased with our play tonight. Now, it looked to us, Coach, like you sort of had uh, one of those game plans. Bill Russell, I heard him say once that when he was guarding Wilt Chamberlain, the important thing was to cut down on his assist. And it looked like that you fellas had a defense designed to really limit Tyrone Bowe. Well, not really. What we wanted to do, we didn't want to help out on him too much. We wanted to just try to, you know, if he did penetrate, we didn't want to help out. We were going to fake it as man and go back because he's great at penetrating and hitting the old man. That's about all we did. And we said, you know, we were going to let him shoot outside, but he hit some outside shots on us now. He's a good little player, and, you know, he's hard to control. Now, a couple of times we noticed that Derek Lewis was matched up against Bogues. Was that just a switch, or was that something that you had planned? No, we were like in a combination. We were playing half zone and half man. He just happened to be matched up where he was in when we were playing the zone at that time. Now, you seem to do a very good job against uh, Watson and Klein. They have both had very poor first halves, and it looks like because of the defensive pressure that you were able to apply. Well, Derek Lewis was guarding Klein. I, I thought he did an excellent job on him, and the Baxter was guarding uh, uh, Watson, so uh, he did a good job on him. And we played good team defense. We overplayed, and, uh, you know, we took them out of doing what they wanted to do is slow the tempo of the ball game down. That's what our hopes were to do. Now, Coach, you've played a, almost a murderous schedule thus far, and certainly with this win, it puts you in a position where if you can have some good games down the stretch, you're certainly not out of anything by any stretch of the imagination. Well, you figure, you know, five of our, or six of our losses in the ACC were the teams, uh, were, let's see, Duke, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina, two to Duke, one to Georgia Tech, one to North Carolina. All those teams are one, two, three in the polls, and we lost to Virginia at Virginia, and they hadn't beaten us there in a couple of years. We lost to North Carolina State, who's got a real good ball club, and so does Virginia. So, uh, you know, I think we're a good team. We just, uh, we're losing a little bit of confidence there after we lost that real close one to Georgia Tech and North Carolina, and now we've got to go play Villanova and Notre Dame on the road, and if we can pull off two of those wins, I think we'll be back in shape. Now, John Johnson came off the bench for you tonight, had an excellent game, had 15 yeah. points. In fact, we named him our player of the game. Uh, is that something, you know, did you give him some certain instructions, or was it a different game plan, or did he just get more involved? No, not really. I mean, he's been starting, and he's a freshman, and sometimes I think that puts a little bit more, too much pressure on him. Yesterday in practice, he was playing with the second team. He looked great. I said, look, play tonight like you're on the second team, right? Don't play like you're on the first team, and uh, I think he did that. He took the ball through the hole, and made some good moves inside, hit his jumper, and played, played a pretty good ball game for him. Now, your kids played with a lot of confidence tonight, Coach, uh, and that must be a pretty hard thing to get them to do that after the kind of games that you've been through. Well, you know, like I told them, we played Georgia Tech. We should have beat Georgia Tech. You know, we had them where we want them, and we could have beaten North Carolina. And So I told them I knew what we could do. I, I showed them the Duke film, first half of the Duke film, and I showed them the first half of the Carolina film, and I said, you guys are two different teams, you know. And um, so maybe we came back playing with confidence tonight. I hope so, and I hope we can keep it going. Well, thank you for stopping by, Coach. Nice game. Right. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Let's get back now to Mike Patrick. Thank you very much, Dan. Our final score once again here at Cole Fieldhouse, Maryland 77. Wake Forest 55 will be back to wrap it up from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park right after this from Budweiser. Fieldhouse, and he has one of the great players in the country, one of the great players in the history of Maryland basketball, Lenny Bias. Let's go down to Dan. Thanks again, Mike, and we are here with Lenny Bias. Len, it was a game that uh, you and your teammates seemed to go out and play very confidently. Did you have some sort of a meeting or something and decide you really wanted this one? Well, we've been losing a lot of ACC games real close. In fact, we got blown out once against Virginia. So we just came out and said we wanted to play confident and practice hard. We got the open shots that we wanted when we were in practice, so we just drilled on it. it Seems like it came like clockwork today. Now, we have a couple of things that we want to look at, Lynn. Uh, you had a couple of very interesting plays, some alley-oop dunks, and we want you to take a look over here at the monitor and describe this to us. Oh, that's when Dirk 
got the man coming to him. He had drew the man up when they keep throwing the ball and then left the baseline open for me. He could just pass it to him. Now here's an alley oop play here. Right here, that's when uh, I got behind a defensive player and one of my guys was posting up, so he had no, he had an alternative to either play me or Keith or I mean Dirk, who was on the box. So he played Dirk and Keith was able to throw the ball to him. Now, how are you able to catch the ball like that with a guy on you and dunk it back over your head? Well, <laughs> I comes easy for me. It's not hard at all. <laughs> you just put the ball up there. I just tell them to throw it up there and I'll get it. And that's what most of the time what they do. Now, what are, what are you and your teammates looking forward to here going down the stretch line? What are you looking for? Well, we're looking forward to winning a lot more of our games. Uh, I think it all it took was just one, one game for us to get on the winning streak. And I think that's what's going to get us going right here, this game against uh, Wake Forest. So hopefully we'll keep on winning and keep the win streak going. Okay, thank you very much, Len Bias. Let's have, let's have Jeff Baxter step in here. Thank you very much, Jeff. Jeff, you seem very confident in that outside shot tonight. Is that something you decided you were going to do? Yeah, uh, last night I had talked to Coach, and he had told me to take my time, take my shot, because it was there, and that I, he had the confidence in me to hit it. So that's what I did. I just took the shot, and now, that's what it went. Now, playing in the backcourt, what special, specially did you do, you and Keith Gatlin and John Johnson, to try to prepare to play against Tyrone Bogues? Basically, we, we just tried to protect the ball. Each time he was in our area, we wanted to give the ball to the other person who had a uh, bigger guard on him. And it worked effectively, except one time I, I dribbled around him. But as you noticed, I gave it up as quickly as possible. Now, defensively, you did a very good job uh, as a team effort keeping Bogues from getting his assists. Mm -hmm. uh, was there something that you worked on specially to accomplish that? Yeah, we, we were um, in practice. We were concentrating on him when he's driving, just fake and stay at your man instead of letting him pass off, make him take the shot and see if he can make the shot. And I think we were very effective at stopping him and doing that. Now, we want you to take a look for here is Jeff at the monitor over here. If you can see it, this is something that uh, guards always like to do. We're going to get a look at a Jeff Baxter jump shot here. <laughs> I was glad that one went in. I, I think that might have been the first one. I'm not sure, but I was glad it went in, and uh, it started, I guess, a roll for me, which was good. Now, you seem to have become more confident in that outside jump shot. Uh, is, do you work on that a lot in practice? Yeah, what I've been doing is, uh, Coach told me about Jeff Lebo and coming <laughs> and going over to George Washington University and shooting the day they played us. So I've been doing that, trying to, I guess, shoot just like him or something of that sort. So that's what I've been doing, working on it. Well, thanks very much for stopping by, Jeff. Let's see if we can get Keith Gatlin to come on in. Come on in here, Keith. Played a very good game tonight, Keith. Uh, seemed like you had Tyrone Bogues. He was your responsibility. Uh, how did you approach that? I tried to approach it uh, with the attitude of let Tyrone shoot from the outside. But he's so quick, he goes by anybody I've seen. And uh, I had a little trouble with him at first, but he kind of battled off, even off. Now, the very first play of the game, you were guarding Tyrone Bowes. It looks like you were trying to lay off of him, and he went right by you that first time. Did that concern you? It, it did, because I was, I don't know, like 10 feet off where it is, blew right by me. It was kind of uh, discouraging, but hey, Tyrone is 5'3", and I'm 6'5". I can't bend that low. <laughs> you moved the ball very well against the zone, particularly early in the game. Uh, is there anything, did you work specifically against that type of a zone? Yes, we did. We kind of played this game like three or four times in our mind. We knew that uh, they would come out and play a box or a triangle on Lennon. The guards had to uh, pick up the slack, and uh, I got a lot of assists with passing the ball. Jeff and Lennon was doing well. You were matched up a couple of times against Mark, against Mark Klein. Was that by design in there? Yes, because uh, he was kind of big, and I have a lot of you know, long arms, so I had to play him in the triangle defense we run. And it was okay to the end. He started hitting something, and uh, it was okay. Well, thank you very much for stopping by, Keith. It was a good game tonight. Uh, congratulations, and we wish you a lot of luck as you go down mom. the road. Sure you can. Hi, Mom. Hey, what's up, Poochie? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Keith Gatlin. Let's now go back to Mike Patrick. Thanks very much, Dan Bonner. The final score again here in College Park was Maryland 77, Wake Forest 55. The Terps get their first conference win. Wake Forest, tough year for them. The Deacons under Bob Stack go to 0 and 9 in the ACC. Like you to take a look at the names of the folks involved with ACC basketball. Our telecast throughout the year, they do a wonderful job. Thanks tonight, especially Ed Wade, our director in Quasi Star, producing upstairs in the truck. Maryland led 34-17 at the half. The game was never in doubt, even though Wake Forest uh, matched them almost point for point in the second half. Wake shot 39% from the game. Maryland shot 74% and had everything their way all night here at Coalfield House in College Park. On behalf of Dan Bonner and our entire broadcast crew, from a very cold and windy night in suburban Maryland, this is Mike Patrick. 
So long, everybody.